Matt Milano joining us on the line here. The Bills linebacker now signed up for the next four years. Matt, thanks for taking the time to join us. Uh, we won't keep you long. We know you answered a lot of questions already, but congratulations. My first question for you is, what kind of feelings did this first experience with free agency kind of stir up in you from late January when the season ended to getting things done now? What was kind of running through your head? How are you feeling about this whole thing? Um, appreciate you guys having me on, by the way. But, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of uncertainty uh, was going on in my head, but I always had faith in uh, what I had done in the previous four years and, and knew I would end up somewhere. But um, I wanted to be with the Bills, and I'm glad. I'm glad we got something worked out. When did the when did the con? I know that they you know in passing you have conversations. Hey, we want to talk to you. We will be you know all of that. When did the conversation with your agent start in earnest, and how long did it take from you know from your perspective from beginning to end? And you know like give us a little t uh, a snapshot of the timeline and and your thoughts about it. Yeah, it was uh, it was fairly quick how the whole thing happened, but. Um, you know, I just I left it all up to my agent, and I, and I told him I want to be in Buffalo and I want to be with the Bills and um, whatever we got to do to make that happen. Um, so we came to an agreement, and uh, here here we are today. But it's been cool. It's been a cool experience, and um, I'm glad I'm glad I ended up back in Buffalo. I know that you know you're you've got a good support system with your family and your parents. They make it to a lot of your games. How many? People were on the Matt Milano consulting committee with this with this decision, or or was this something that they left you to your own devices and say, you know, you do what you feel is best for you, and we'll support you. It was basically that that second answer you just gave. Um, I had a couple close family members with me the whole way um, since it actually started out of out of high school into college into the NFL. But um, yeah, it was kind of it was kind of left up to me, and and at the end of the day, I'm the one. Uh, making those decisions and I'm the one being in that town and I'm the one playing so uh, that's what it came down to but definitely had some great support from the family yeah and now I I, I kind of from way back in the day when I played you can kind of, I got to get a feeling that what are your, your thoughts kind of turn now your focus turns into the next six months what it's going to take to get on the field with your guys and I know you said in, in your press conference in your zoom meeting just a minute ago that you got a bunch of shout outs from your teammates uh, how excited are you to get back together with those guys and what have you what do you know about when that might happen yeah i mean so excited you know those are the guys that i came in with um we've built great relationships um on and off the field um those are some of my closest friends to this day so just to be able to be back out there with them and um get this ball get this ball moving again but i hope it's soon uh i don't really have word yet on when we're all getting back together i know there's a little uncertainty with the whole COVID situation still going on and otas and all that stuff so I think we'll find out here shortly. I know Coach is always preaching the growth mindset and you know never being satisfied with your game. Do you have some things on your own personal to-do list, Matt, this offseason with, with respect to your individual game and, and what you want to bring to the field next fall? Yeah, I'm just continuing to get stronger, get faster. Um, I'm more hungrier than ever right now. Got a chip on my shoulder, so I'm ready to go and ready to, ready to uh, prove to everybody else what, what the Bills have. One or just one question for me, the last one, and, and in two parts. One, you know it's a contract year this last season. The team's playing extremely well, and you you kind of you pull the pec muscle, and you can't get on the field, and then all the COVID complications with the entire team. Tell us how dark it got for you, knowing that how important of a year this last year was for you. On the same time as being on a team that won 13 games the regular season, all that good stuff's going on. But how dark did it get for you personally, knowing? Uh, that you couldn't help them when you wanted to because of the injuries. And now to have this thing happen the way it did, how relieving it must be. Yeah, it was never, uh, it was never dark as what you were, what you were describing. Right, right. I was definitely upset at myself, but um, there's some things you can't control in life. And I always believed in myself and I believed in my abilities and I know what I can do when I get back out, out on that field. So that, that, was the, that was the things that kept, kept kind of running through my head. Um, and I also had great support from everybody, everybody in the building, from trainers to, um, to coaches to players to everybody. So it never really got to that point where you hear some guys go through some tough times. But um, it was definitely tough, but not, not, the, uh, not the dark, dark days <laughs> you were talking about. Last one for me, Matt. I know you're a self-described minimalist. So are you going to treat yourself? <laughs> are you going to treat yourself in any way with your newfound wealth or is it all just going right in the bank here? 
it's all going into the bank into a couple <laughs> of investments but for me it's not really about the money man i'm just trying to i love playing football um i love doing it you know that's why i think i've been so successful it's because i love it it's not it's not a job for me it's something i enjoy doing every day um day in and day out so i'm excited i'm excited to get back to work and excited to be a, a buffalo bill do you remember what it's like to come to work here at the stadium at one bills drive, you'd pull in, you go back around the back of the building, you'd walk in. Do you remember what it's like without the COVID complications and you just walk in and you can be in the locker room and you don't have to get your temperature taken. Are you kind of ready for that to happen? I'm ready for that, man. We need that ASAP. Hopefully, hopefully next year, but we'll see. We will see. All right, Matt, listen, thanks for the time. We appreciate you giving us a few minutes here. I know the fans are, are happy. They're over the moon here in Buffalo and going bananas that uh, they know you're going to be back in that 58 jersey. Kudos to you on your social media gifts. You are a registered pro. Um, fantastic stuff. I mean, it's getting a lot of positive feedback here. People were rip-roaring about it. I was getting my phone was blowing up just from the stuff you were putting out there. But uh, congrats to you, man. Uh, best of luck to you on a successful offseason here. We can't wait to see you back up here. And all the best to your parents as well. All right, man. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. All right. Thanks, that's man. Matt Milano joining us here, fresh off his four-year contract to stay a Buffalo I gotta, Bill. I can, I, I can feel the just – you almost like – quiver inside when you sign something like that and it's like let's like let's go yeah you know let's well you heard play. micah hyde on on the zoom call last week you know la it was a week ago he signed his contract extension right. for a couple more years in a bill's uniform he was entering the last year of his deal and he's i'm ready to go now he's right. like i'm ready to come to practice yeah. today yeah. like i and I, and you could speak to it certainly better than i can steve but when you sign the deal you basically cement your at the very least short-term future and it's in the same place that you've been just walk us through how jacked up you get yeah. knowing you're going to be with the same guys and the same system with the same coaches the value of I that and the feelings that it gives you i signed one big contract in my career it's a three-year thing uh it was right around plan b and and i yeah. and i get it and uh got a bunch of money up front and i was actually at that time our kids were little and we were going back and letting them live in with our grand, my parents, my wife's parents for off seasons. We go back there for four or five months and live back in Kansas with my fam her, my wife's family as well. And I would train back there at my high school. And I'll never forget. We're talking about doing the deal, and the, and they they give me the the contract is done, great. And he goes, and they FedEx me a contract to. Like my, ta it's one one stoplight, <laughs> and it's not even a stoplight anymore. Now it's a blinking. It light. might be the only FedEx package going to that town. You're with me. <laughs> so I'm I'm actually in. They I have them send it to the school because they you know they can't find my they can't find my parents my in laws house out in the middle right. So they send it to the school and I get it and I'm working out with actually the wrestling coach. Oddly enough, so I'm sitting there. And I go. <laughs> You want to see the contract? He goes, yeah, yeah. So I show him the contract, you know, and, it, and the numbers are all on it, and, and I sign the thing, stick it back in the envelope, and off it goes. And, uh, you know, it's one of the best workouts of my life, right? So yeah. I'm like, the adrenaline's like just through the roof. Through the roof. And uh, it was, yeah, you just, it's one of those things where it's like, wow, I, you just hit the accelerator button. You can't wait to get back to, I want to go right. back to Buffalo right now. I want all the guys to show up and let's start practicing. It's, it's one of those moments where, you know, it's one of those rare moments where you feel empowered, motivated, inspired, and responsible. And respected. And yeah. And, and respond. And like, like my efforts are valued. Yeah. You feel on like this team, you feel like for the first time in your life, you're one of those guys that people read about where you make a lot of money, you're in this great team, you're associated with that great team, even in and of yourself, and it, you feel, you know, as a guy like me, and Milano too, obviously, you feel like, man, you feel responsible yeah. to go, like, be your part of that team. So it's, and doing, doing it in March is a downer because you got to wait, like, three months before you can even show up. So I'm kudos to Matt Milano. Those guys, it's it's a great time of year for these guys. It gives their it's a great sense of joy and uh, and pride for their families, uh, and 
especially for a guy like Milano we've been talking about. He was gone. Yeah. Well, he was, we were all, we had, we had we'd been writing him off for weeks. Well, I don't know that writing him off, I think we just were of the opinion that the market value for him was going to enter the stratosphere where the Bills just couldn't compete for we his services get, yeah. and overpay for him to get him back. He so was, yeah, he was the gone. fact that he was interested, well, what we didn't know was this was his first priority. My first priority was let's see if we and the Bills can get something done that's fair for me and works for the Bills. And structure it for the Bills. And yeah. fortunately, they, they got to that point. So good on Milano and his camp and good on the Bills for finding that common ground because sometimes it's harder to find uh, than in some other situations. Fortunate, and you heard Matt say when you asked him, he said it came together pretty quickly. Yeah. And I think the only reason that it took this long was because I think the Bills were waiting, like a lot of other teams were, on a hard and fast number as to what the hell the cap was going to be. Yeah, and they had to know, and they figured if that was where it's going to be, we need to have this at least this much space, and as soon as we get it, we'll do the deal. You know, and that, and with the uh, release of Quentin Jefferson and John Brown, the money's there all of a sudden, and away they go. Yeah, and I was fortunate enough to to meet Matt's parents a couple of years ago. Found out that they grew up in the same hometown that I did, which was kind oh, of yeah. crazy. Um, I mean, they live in Orlando now, which is where they raised Matt and his siblings. But uh, just you know, when you talk to people or, or people's parents, and it's like you hear that comment from scouts all the time: "Oh, they come from good stock." Matt Milano comes from yeah. good stock, and that resonates in the player and the kind of player you get out on the field. And we see right. that when Matt plays. So yeah. uh, it's just good all the way around for the Bills organization. So well, kudos that's... to the Pagulas for shelling out the money, for <laughs> being in his crew, for negotiating the contract, and it's going to benefit Coach. And I think the way Coach and Bob Babich and Leslie Frazier have helped him blossom into the player he's become weighed on Matt Milano's mind. These guys made me into the player I am at this level now, and I want to keep, you know, excelling getting and getting better. And I think he firmly believes that this coaching staff and that his head coach will enable him to do that or, or give him the tools and the means by which to do that. Yeah, it's interesting, too. And we, we've been talking also about uh, um, the growth mindset. There was the documentary that was on, and, and McDermott yeah. always says, you know, it's, it's in these guys' DNA. They want to be better every day. It's kind of that's what we look for. We don't recruit – Football players, we recruit people. Matt Milano, you could say what you want about it being hyperbole. The DNA is there for Milano. It's it, it's part of who he is, yeah, and that's it's evident. That's why they excel inside a culture that cultivates that, and it seems to be working here in Buffalo. Yeah, so it's a good week, a good day all the way around. If you're a Bills fan, or if you're the Buffalo Bills, because uh, they've got number fifty-eight who's going to be on the field for this team for the foreseeable future in the front seven of that defense. And knowing this defense plays 90% nickel, or at least that was the percentage they played last year, highest ever uh, for the Bills as a team, and the highest percentage in the entire league last year. Uh, and as we mentioned, Tremaine Edmonds and Matt Milano have lined up alongside each other the last three seasons. So too has Taron Johnson. So going into this season... Edmonds, Milano, and Taron Johnson as the nickel corner going into their fourth season together as the se at the second level of the defense. Right. I mean, that counts for something. Yeah, it goes a long way. Um, you can – it gives the coaching staff a lot of flexibility to be able to reach back a couple of years and say, hey, remember this and how we evolved out of it. And they just remember where they came from terminology-wise and scheme-wise. I said this a little earlier with Milano and Edmonds, but it just – streamlines the process and gives so much flexibility to their ability to prepare in new and different ways because they all start from a base and a foundation where they know way they know the roots of the wrinkles that they've put in the defense over the course of months and months and years and years and season after season mm -hmm. and it just streamlines the process so well that you can say hey you know how we got to this now we're going to tweak it just this much for this game and that, it just streamlines it. They come out more prepared on a week-to-week -week basis with less effort and less time. And it just gives them that little extra edge uh, that some teams don't. They have to go back and reteach something or teach something new to some guys who haven't been there, and they don't have to do that. There are instances where Leslie Frazier, on a given game day, at halftime, can probably be like, right. hey, remember when we flipped this and we played it this way against Indianapolis? Yeah. 
we're going to do that here coming out on right. the first series in the third quarter. Right. Oh, okay, yeah, so I got to do this. Yep, let's do it. We got it. Everybody good? Yeah, good. Go. That's what you get from That's right. that kind of continuity. That's exactly right. And it, it just and on and everything's done on the fly these days. I mean, this coaching staff oh my is, God, yeah. is renowned for it's it's not halftime adjustments. It's what they do last series. Okay, here's what we're gonna do this series, and then this series, and the next series. So that communication and the economy with which experience in the system gives you makes you that much more ready to adjust on the fly. And what else could make your week better? than getting FaceTime by Tredavious White. <laughs> Can you imagine right. that guy on FaceTime ringing you up? Mamelano! Yeah! You're like, can't you see right? it? Can't you see it? That would, yeah. that would be awesome. That's so fun. And same thing with Dion. I don't know if you could get a better phone call. With Dion Dawkins, same yeah. thing. I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah, just the snowman. <laughs> that would be great. Tredavious is a hoot, though, man. Yeah. Can you imagine the stuff he was saying on FaceTime? Yo, you got money, you got money like me now. I could, I could just hear him screaming at him. Unbelievable. Oh, my gosh. Uh, the best. Really good. Good week for the Bills, for sure. Uh, Micah Hyde, seven days ago, two-year extension, and now Matt Milano uh, in the fold for the next four years. 